My name is Tode Kilani. I'm 70 years old. Wow. <laughs> and if there's anyone who's been born before 1948, show up your hand. Let me see. <laughs> okay, so I'm a storyteller and I've chosen the medium of film to tell stories. But there are two types of storytellers. From my childhood, I learned this experience. Children will flock after the storyteller and say, Baba, please tell us another story. Tell us another story. And the other type of storyteller, when he approaches the children's scatter, and they say, don't let him catch you. <laughs> Please, you have to get away before he gets here. So at the end of this talk, we we'll decide what kind of storyteller I am. So let me bore you with another story. I was born in Lagos, but my father brought me when I was five to Abekuta. And it's strange coincidence that 65 years later, here I am, I am I right now telling you the story at this same city of Abekuta. And you see, Get to the family compound, you know, from Lagos, I looked around, and when I saw goats, you know, those black goats, Obuko, I took off, I ran. I ran because in Lagos, I had never seen live goats. You know, so, and I looked around, ah, life here is not gonna be like Lagos, essentially, you know, the Yoruba house is rectangular, just functional. <laughs> and there is no electricity. No, so anyway. And I miss my mother so much that at night I will go in front of the main house in the main road. You know, I hope that she will arrive and take me back to Lagos. But then something magical happened because Market women from Iberekodo returning with their load on their head, you know, and cars coming from the other side from Ajitadu will flood and bat them with light, and that will throw their shadows on the opposite wall. And I could see them, the figures long dancing along, you know, and that was my free cinema show. <laughs> anyway, the compound, our compound is rectangular, you know, and it was a melting point of all cultures. And I dare say tolerance. Because the first house as you turn right is occupied by a devotee of Shango. Right after that is Badalabi's house, is an a gungu. You know, it's properly in the cult of a Google, so they are Google people. My father's house, my grandfather's house, we are Muslims. And his friend, Jadi Inka house, along the same wall between them, is a Christian. And to close the rectangle is the house of the chief imam of our local mosque. <laughs> so you can imagine, you know, all these culture, you know, we did everything together, the Shango, you know, during the Shango festival, I could see the women, you know, cast, yeah, it was drama, and they danced, and remember, I told you 65 years ago, they are about, grab their rappers and dance. Oh yeah, 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 or take the masculine, you know, Eric Tola, the Igungu, the tall Igungu, the, the youth with the adrenaline and energy following them in that procession, very violent. 
and they go, they, they go something like, Tio to have a co co lori, Iwa lo parare, Tio to have a ge ge long, Iwa lo parare. See, that's the kind of environmental environment. Stories, stories, drama, dance. And then the environment was very, very friendly. From that time to the bank of Ogo River, it's banana grove, wild fruits, catch crabs, and fish. You could never go hungry. <laughs> so, started my primary education, and what I got out of it, I discovered the school library. That's another story. But I was in Abekta Grammar School from 1962 to 1966. You know, and that, as you know, is a great school. Again, I found the library. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So what had happened is that I managed to pass out, pass out of a grammar school in grade three. Almost failed the school side because my own idea of my syllabus was very different from the school. <laughs> I was carried away in all the books I was reading, Baroness Oxy and all these books and so on. But I found photography. You know, I had invested money and time over several cameras and learning of photography. But in my final year in 1966, I finally acquired the Halina 35X. The Halina 35X was my first single lens reflex, and it contained all the control I had. With that camera in my hand, I decided, no, no university, forget it. The three, the three didn't matter anymore. I was going to be, it's a life changer for me to be a photographer. So soon after freshman school, I was an apprentice, which lasted only about 18 months because I fell in love again to the cinema. You see, the difference between the still photograph, you take one picture at a time, and they are, I envy my friends who remained true, you know, to photography. But for me, it was this, this idea of pictures moving, you know, as long as you agree with the principle of what they call persistence of vision, where you don't take one picture at a time, you take 24. And if you present it at 24, you get this illusion of movement. But again, you have the, if you add a sound, have your picture and you can talk and you can put word into the, and of course, again, forget photography. This is the one that I'm going to do, <laughs> you know? So I got into television, in 1970, and they trained me, you know, maybe about five years, six. I saw my work on television. I would rush to my friends and drag them to television and say, wait, you see, my work is going to come on now, you know, but it didn't, it, was, it didn't last. It didn't last because I didn't want my pictures on this small wooden, black and white, you know, this small box, and they had to wait until a particular time, they start, start with the uh, sick tune, color bar, and all. no, no, no. I didn't want that. What I wanted was giant picture, you know, on the screen, like, um, like Lawrence of Arabia, like Guns of Navarron, like, you know, all this. So I knew I had to continue uh, that training. I needed that training, something that's different from what television was doing. So there's only one place to go, London Film School. I saved for one year before I could pay for one year of the two courses. So I arrived in London in what they called the autumn. It was an autumn of 1976. And I found it was windy, it was cold. Trees, leaves were falling off trees. And it was so bleak looking. And I thought, I'm not going to like this. I have to find a way, get away from this place as quickly as I could. But anyway, I took the two years, you know, the London Film School pride itself in the ability, you know, to give students a two-year course in the art and technical filmmaking, you know, with the aesthetics, history, and then the power to use images to make great pictures. So 
Never mind. Then, then let me go into the fact, you know, that I couldn't rent a house. I lived in my friend's sitting room, and I was a cleaner, you know, for a whole year, you know, before, you know, I was a bit st st stable. So quickly, after two years, what did I learn? I knew about world cinema, history, aesthetics, and at that time, came to respect close encounters of the talk behind Steven Spielberg, John Lucas, Star Wars, and Stanley Kubrick, 2001 Space Odyssey. Okay, all right, so I realized that this is actually not the kind of films I love to make. Let's be realistic. <laughs> Those films cost $100 million in Nigeria. I'm not going to find, I'm not likely to find 200,000 Naira. So the thing is to take the technology, appropriate it, and then go back home to make the kind of films that African filmmakers should be making. The films, you know, that looks into our own circumstances, that takes from our history, from our great artistic traditions, and films that constantly question like in the mold of Nahi Parson, the father, grandfather of African cinema, Semben Usman, and of course, Ibat Ogunde, you know, who you know, made his theater was theater of social and political relevance. That's the kind of film I thought that Africa, see, suddenly to become imbued, and suddenly to, be, to hold the power to tell this story it comes with unbelievable responsibilities, you know, and so um, that's the direction I went. And you can see from some of the films that I have made, my work is a constant dialogue with my environment and the people who went before me. So when I stand in front of people like you, I tell you that I'm not here by myself. I'm a representative, representative for those who have come before and who are still, are, are still around. And also, it's a constant dialogue between us and people. And if you look, for instance, the films, you can, of course, remember, they can be classified along literary adaptation. And there are a particular set of five films that are for conscience camera. These films are Koshebe, Shawrode, Agogo Ewo, Aruba, and the Campus Queen. See, these are the conscious films. But on the other hand, you have films that are adapted from, you know, great literary resource. Koshebe again, Oleku, Thunderbolt, um, the Campus Queen. The Narrow Path, Mami, and now City in the So, from these elements, we can go back to the source. What is the importance of culture? And I told you, culture is everything. So, I finally, you know, I'm eternally grateful to my father who saw that vision and brought me right in the middle you know, of our people. A, a, a film, it cannot be eliminated from your own background. You know? So you, you have you know, to continue that dialogue. And that's why I followed the Oshogo group of artists, Jimo Braimo, Debisi Favumi, Murano Yelami, Rufus Okudele. I didn't know why I was following them. And then, of course, I followed fella Orlando Julius, Sir Warrior, Raichi Mezie, you know, and Akim Karim, all those musicians and all. And then again, if you look in our society today, that's a problem because there's a disconnect because now parents are cutting off that, com that continuity by bearing from children for speaking in their own language, you know, and circumstances. As an error, I think we can still connect this. But finally, it is the desire and the dream of every filmmaker to go international. And to go international, you need a currency. 
the currency you need when you get to international to exchange those things are three things. You need your language. You need your culture. And then you need the technology. Thank you very much. <laughs>